So we need, we need somebody tweeting out there to tweet at Mobile Media Summit, at Megan Blaubel. Uh Native advertising is what ads were meant to be, but we forgot. At Megan Blaubel is like 130 characters, so yeah. address your characters wisely. Um, tell me about tell me about creative. So you know it, it's you can build one or two TV spots or five TV spots. You can build a couple of print executions. All of a sudden, in digital now mobile, it's exploding. What is that doing to your brand? How much pressure is that putting on your brands? The creative aspect. You know, I think creative for us, we're we're moving swiftly away from. I say shitty, the shitty banner ad. You're allowed to say shitty on this panel. Okay. Um, Somebody said turd this morning. Our, our, our mantra is, is, you know, content is Thank creative you. moving forward. And, you know, we work in, well, I'm in the geography, I'm in, in the America's marketing group, we work very, very closely with our, our global media team. We're, you know, we're kind of on the one team mantra this year. Um, we have this mission where we are creating content internally through a newsroom functionality within our dot-com properties. Uh, we're working with trusted partners um, but on, the, on the creative side to create content for us, and we're also working with publishers to co-create content. Um, there's nothing better than content that tells the story of your brand in a way that touches you emotionally, inspirationally, or aspirationally to get somebody to have that brand affinity. A banner ad's not going to do that. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So for me, in the brand, brand world, right? So uh, an average brand manager within Nestle two years ago created about five pieces of content a year, five to eight significant pieces of content. And the average brand manager at the end of 2013 for one of our divisions uh, approved 328 pieces of creative. So that you're going from five to 500, right? Just for uh, illustrative purposes. Five to 500 is logarithmic. You can't scale that up. There is no system. And you're talking in two years. In two years. Um, by the end of this year, I would expect it to be 1,500 pieces of creative per brand. That's not scalable within the current constraints. So a newsroom format is, is a really good solution. Um, working with content uh, providers to help develop deep pieces of content and then content distributors to be able to see that content, content more organically than we're, we, we're used to. Banner ads do not answer it. Um, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing is to make sure that you have a very good story and a content cloud. Um, brands are also very used to saying, you know, on Monday we're going to post this, on Tuesday we're going to do this, on Wednesday we're going to do this, just in terms of the social media feed. Nobody really thinks like that, right? You and I don't go on Facebook and be like, oh, it's Thursday, I'm supposed to talk about my cats, babies, kids today. Um, brands need to be a little bit more adaptive with their content development. That requires a restructuring, restructuring, a rethinking, and, and a, again, this cloud format instead of a calendar format. We're doing that. I mean, we have um, we have a couple superstars in our global media team that developed a program called IQ.intel.com, and um, they completely changed the way that we thought about content internally at Intel, and have done a great job of building out that cloud of content. I'll give you an example. Luke is running, has been running IQ, um, and he is developing a, um, a commentary on uh, another industry buzzword right now that is producing 60, 60 pieces of content that are going to be released over the next, I think, six or seven weeks. It's a lot of content. And you need to adjust the content for the, the channel as well, right? So you can't just have one, again, the social media because it's the most obvious for most uh, folks, one Facebook post and then copy it over to Twitter and copy it over to you know YouTube and whatever, whatever. You really need to understand why our consumers go. What is the emotional benefit that your target is going to at Pinterest, at Facebook, at Twitter, at YouTube? There's a different emotional benefit for your target in each of those. Being able to make sure that you're adjusting your content to deliver that emotional benefit while still staying true to your story. That really really is key. How do you, Megan, how do you think about, well, you had an interesting comment um, before we started about Google Maps, Facebook, and YouTube, and you kind of lumped it and said, you know, you could attack mobile with those three properties. Yeah, if I could, this is the other thing. So, you know, uh, Nestle, we're, we're going mobile first. So we meet with our agencies, we meet with our brands, we meet with everybody, make sure our own properties are mobilized, socialized, etc. And you say, okay, you want, uh, this percent of your spend in digital, of that you want 80%, 90% of your impressions to be mobile. 
and inevitably someone goes, okay, let's do some smartphone banner ads. And you're like, hold up, no, no more of that. Instead of banner ads, here's a crazy idea, let's go with how people are using mobile. Mobile as a medium infers that on a smartphone campaign, if you want your impressions to come through smartphones, you could cover Google Maps, Facebook, and YouTube have a very strong content strategy. I'm still trying to figure out the Google Maps portion of it. And, and do a- From uh, stick location. Yeah, from stick location. Waze actually had a great campaign. Waze is a really good I love Waze. Yeah. Yeah. It, it kills your battery. You have to have it plugged in, but Waze is really cool. It kills your battery. It's, it's not as easy to do like that on a national scale, but if you have a certain program, it, that is the way to, to unlock Google Maps. And then you do Google search for open web campaign, and you've got like, all of, all of your campaign is all of a sudden mobile without you creating a single banner ad or your own single branded ad. Um, and and you, you're you going where your consumers are in an organic and scalable fashion. Let me ask you a question. You said something that's very interesting in your first sentence. Do you think agencies are putting enough effort into training and knowledge and learning to be able to support what you're trying to do with mobile? Answer that because I'm not on the agency side. Um, and I love my agencies, and I don't want them to hate me at the end of this. Um, no, I, I'm not, I don't mean to call it because you, you have a very good agency and you both have good agencies, yeah. but, but I, I hear that from clients that uh, you just said, I go to them and they say, well, let's just do a banner. Our, our agencies, I think mobile has happened much faster than online has happened. You know, online yes. really took 10, 15 years yeah. to happen. Mobile is happening in such a, 2010 was the first iPad, if I don't screw it up, right? So it's happening in a much more compressed time frame. Are agencies reacting fast enough to the seismic change? I don't think anyone's reacting fast enough. I don't think it's up to the agency. I think the agency has a responsibility, but so do brands. It goes back to that click-through number, right? So uh, talk to the agencies, they will no longer give our brands click-through rates. Thank goodness, that, that has eliminated that discussion, it's great. Could you make every brand? <laughs> and, and then I go into a brand meeting, and the brand manager goes, oh, that looks like it's a great campaign, it had this, 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 but what was our click-through rate? And, and it is, it's education on both sides. It's education on the business, as a business owner, and it's education on the agency, the person helping us to navigate these, these very choppy waters. Um, everybody needs to be in the same boat. David, for totally agree. Yeah, I mean, you look at what an agency is juggling. I think that there are some very, very specialized agencies that get mobile. Um, we work with one in particular that has done a fantastic job for us, Ansible. Um, we've done a number of things with them. I think, you know, to take your media agency of record and expect them to be specialized experts on emerging technologies and platforms is maybe a little bit of a high expectation. They should be smart on it but they should be open to outsource to people that specialize. End of the day, Aaron, are you, are you killing me? We got a time on it here. We got okay. to deal with it, so. Uh, you let the last show You guys have time? I'm good. No, it's my flight, so. Okay. Uh, All right. And you let me know, okay? All right, so. I'm being respectful for flights. All right, one last question, then we'll do the audience. Okay, thank Fair. you. Um, end of the day, advertising is about sales. Right? Advertising about sales. How do you look at mobile and how it affects your sales? Critical. Critical. You can push a message anywhere, especially close to what we were talking about, you know, zero mile over the last three feet. Um, and sometimes it's that last trigger while they're making that purchase decision, even if they're showcasing within a, within a brick and mortar environment, to choose our brand over another brand. So absolutely critical in my opinion. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't think that brands can sit on their laurels anymore. I think you need to be part of the zeitgeist in order to, to move product. And you can't be part of the zeitgeist unless you're participating in the conversations and the activities that your consumers and your targets participate in. And that is the whole. Largest tech provider, largest you know, uh, 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 chip maker in the world, largest food company in the world. Mobile matters. All right. Let's Aaron, go. Any questions you. from the audience? Let's go to the audience. Oh. Best, question right, gets easy, a, right. best question gets an Intel chip and a drumstick. <laughs> and a drumstick. We got a comedian on stage right now. Dude. Okay. Mike Geelong, Ad Edge. Megan, I was, I was curious how you would characterize the success of a coupon program at the end of the sales cycle when there's actually a POS. I mean, are you actually executing on that where it's redeemable at the POS? 
So I think the, the success of the coupon program depends on the business objective. If I'm trying to drive trial of a new business, it's not just the trial, I also want to make sure that the repeat is there. Because you can drive trial pretty easily just by couponing anything. And so I think that if we really want to unlock and redefine couponing, it's making sure that trial drivers lead to uh, repeatable uh, consumers who are willing to pay a lot more than they paid the first time because they love that product so much. And because you talked to them in a way that was persuasive and, and uh, productively sticky. So redemption doesn't happen at the POS? Redemption happens at POS, but it's not that first redemption that matters. <coughs> okay, got it. Thank you. All right, we have time for one more question. Going once, I'm looking, I'm looking. All right, guys, amazing panel. Thank you very, very much. Great job. All right, with that, I'll introduce our next panel, Redefining User Engagement. I'm getting kind of scared because I keep hearing.